Hey guys, what is cracking? It is Cracking Nation here coming at you guys with the next installment of our competitive analysis videos where this time we're gonna be taking a look at Chen Pao of the Paldi region. If guys, if you are enjoying the Generation 9 analysis, make sure to keep on coming, subscribe to the channel to make sure you are getting up to date with all this content because we are bringing you guys so many competitive analysis to make sure you guys know how to set yourselves up for success when you're building competitive teams from Generation 9 with Generation 9 Pokemon. There's a lot to handle in this new generation, so we're gonna break it down today we're going to be taking a look at Chan Pao. So Chan Pao is a dark ice type. And guys, if you're a Weavile fan, have I got the Pokemon for you? Because this thing is just Weavile on freaking steroids. Um, so first up, dark ice type. We know from Weavile how absolutely dominant that offense type it can be. But there are some things it struggles with. But Chan Pao has the tools it needs to try and get through them a little better than Weavile ever could. Sword of Ruin is going to be an absolutely devastating ability on this Pokemon that lowers all opposing Pokemon's defenses by 25%. What does that mean for Chen Pao? It means this 120 attacks that, that you're about to see here is not actually as lackluster as it might seem because of course Weavile has a higher attack stat by a little bit on paper but this actually is significantly higher in practice with Chen Pao because of this Sword of Ruin ability. 80 HP, 80 defense, 65 special defense, nothing to write home about. This is not Pokemon meant to be taking hits, especially with an absolutely garbage tier defensive typing that Dark and Ice type is, but with 135 speed, so keep in mind this thing is another 10 points faster than Weavile, 135 is a blistering speed stat in any metagame, 120 attack stat is already pretty good, and then Sword of Ruin takes that to almost wall breaking levels, because even opposing defensive mods that come in to take hits, instantly 25% of their bulk is gone, 25% is a lot of bulk when you're trying to take hits from something that comes with the offensive power that Chen Pao was already packing. So I think this Pokemon is going to be an absolute menace. And if you were trying to consider using it on your team, guys, I would strongly recommend it because this thing is going to dominate. 90 special attacks that also isn't that bad. I mean, it doesn't really get a great specialty offensive move pool. So you're going to want to use, and also notably special attack, uh, special attacks don't make use of sort of ruin because it only reduces your opponent's physical defense, not their special defense. So Chen Pao, Mostly going to want to stick to these physically offensive moves, uh, but like I said, this thing is just Weavile on on crack. Like this thing is is insane. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at some notable moves. Uh, first up, your go-to stab move of choice will be Crunch, but you also could run Throat Chop if you find a situation where you think Throat Chop will be helpful. Um, for Ice moves, your Ice Spinner and Ice School Crash discussion will always be afoot. I think for the most part, you're probably going to want, want to run Ice School Crash, but if you're in a situation where you really want to make sure you're not missing, uh, that matters to you more. Ice Spinner is still a pretty good option for sure. Um, it gets also... Uh, some coverage moves in things like Psychic Fangs and Sacred Sword. I think Sacred Sword is a really nice coverage move that really makes this thing stand head and shoulders above Weavile because Weavile usually had to click low kick against a lot of these uh, bulky steals that would come in, which could be not bad. You know, things like Ferrothorn still would take a chunk from that, but Sacred Sword tends to be a safer option, especially if the steel types are not that heavy. So Sacred Sword is a really good option that might be a more safe move to click for uh, Chan Pao, because also if things predicted that Weavile would go to click low kick, which Weavile didn't always have the space to run low kick, people would predict that, bring in a Mon that didn't take that much damage from it and threaten Chan, uh, threaten your Weavile back, so you were in a tough spot there. Sacred Sword has a lot more base power, it's that base 90 fighting move, so it's gonna be a lot harder to switch into when Chan Pao is already getting sort of ruined boosts, already absolutely dominating on the field in that regard. Um, also gets Sword Dance notably, so that's going to be really powerful to help this thing set up. It's going to make it a very dangerous, very devastating sweeper. We'll talk about that later. Gets Recovery, it gets Recover. I guess theoretically you could run that. It's not great because this Pokemon doesn't have the bulk to be taking hits, so Recover is not going to be that helpful all the time. Does get Taunt, gets Ruination, which is the signature of these four Pokemon. Ruination, also not a bad move for what it's worth, but I think for the most part you're your stabs will be a little better served, but Ruination definitely moves to keep an eye on. It, it could make its way onto some sets in a pinch. Ice Shard, Sucker Punch, this thing does get priority on both of its stabs, which is quite cool, but you're usually so fast that you don't really care. That said, we have seen Weavile run Ice Shard in the past to beat things like Garchomp with, uh, you know, Scale Shot it up and going ham or Scarf things. So Ice Shard or Sucker Punch definitely are considerations on this Pokemon. Absolutely, I don't want to say they're not.
Um, taking a look at the first set, what I think is going to be your staple Chen Pao set is just going to be an SD sweeper set. I'm going to run heavy duty boots on this particular version. Uh, you could run Life Orb if you wanted. That would be very viable as well and really boost this offenses to off the charts sky high levels. But heavy duty boots allows you to come in, not take that rocks damage that Chen Pao would otherwise be taking. Keep that extra 25% of your health and really ease your ability to click SD in a if you need to in a pinch. Um, 25, 252 attack, 252 speed and jolly nature to maximize your speed, maximize your offense abilities speaking of which sort of ruin of course is your go-to ability um sd obviously we're gonna be running this name of the set for you gotta make that decision for yourself which ice stab you want to run icicle crash versus ice spinner again or are you gonna t take a little extra power and that good 30 percent flinch chance and sacrifice some accuracy or are you gonna guarantee the accuracy there is a consideration there and both you can't go wrong both will have to speak to your play style and what your team needs crunch will be your go-to dark type stab but it's pretty good not amazing but pretty good uh you do wish this thing got knock off but alas knock off did not get quite the great distribution in generation nine and then the last spot sacred sword or psychic fangs as your coverage move usually i think you're going to want to run sacred sword for sure but psychic fangs is a consideration if your team is not particularly afraid of fighting types or of steel types sorry or if you think you're in a confident position where you probably will be able to beat them anyways with another pokemon you might want to run psychic fangs if you think that would be filling more of a need but overall i think to make chan pao as independent as possible Psychic Sword will be your go-to move. Uh, another set that's pretty similar, Chen Pao is not, definitely not the most versatile Pokemon in the world, um, but this is a similar set. We're going to run Choice Band instead. This time we're going to run uh, no Swords names, and the Choice Band just gives us that immediate power to go come in, start blasting off attacks at really, really good levels right off the bat. Um, everything else about the set's basically the same, except we're going to be able to run both Coverage moves, Psychic Fangs, and Secret Sword. Again, that decision about which Ice-type move to use is up to you, so you'd have to make that decision for yourself. Um, Ice Shard also is a consideration on this set. If you were going to run Ice Shard, I would probably drop Psychic Fangs would be the first move to go, I think, on this set. Ice Shard is, again, a consideration, like it was on Weavile, because it allows you to click those ice shards against scarfs scarfers revenge kill some things a little better it will still be hitting quite hard because of sort of ruin and the combination of everything else chen pao has going on so ice shard definitely consideration over psychic fangs if you want priority but if you want coverage psychic fangs is a really good option as well that's going to be up to you i think ice shard is just about as viable so i really should have written it down here as well um something to think about though ice shard you know could be meta dependent as well if it's a really offensive paced metagame ice fang sorry ice shard will be much more helpful than psychic fangs would be if it's a defensive game where you need to be able to hit harder and get coverage moves on things psychic fangs would be more helpful just as overall big picture here for chen pao it's got an absolutely terrifying menacing combination of speed and power thanks to good stabs and unbelievably strong ability 135 is a blistering speed stat and then you also have 120 which is a very respectable offensive stat right off the bat so all those in conjunction makes they make this thing a gigantic menace like i talked about good offensive stab combination dark and ice we've seen this be a successful stab combination in the past with things like weavile now that said poor base power on its moves like i talked about here you know icicle crash versus ice spinner those are that's kind of your choice but those are not, neither of those is a perfect ice move you'd rather have like a 100 base power like an earthquake style ice move or something you know so poor base power on a move is unfortunate poor defensive typing kind of and below average bulk also hold it back a lot like it is i think slightly more bulky maybe than weavile overall but that's still not bulky at all as we saw when we looked at its stats and that defensive typing holds it back a ton because it has very common weaknesses uh it's weak to rocks as well it's also like things like bullet punch uh vacuum wave mock punch destroy this thing so you're gonna need to be very careful about um, leaving this thing open because of its poor defensive capabilities. Taking a look at some team options, any hazard stacking is going to be really helpful. Something like a Ting Lu could be very helpful because just any time you can get extra chip on things will ease Chen Pao's job of clicking and attacks and getting kills later in the game as a sweeper. Hazard clearing is also really helpful if you're running that choice mana set, for example. Hazard clearer will be a good hazard clear would be extremely helpful because then you won't have to keep taking 25% every time your Chen Pao comes on the field. Gives it some more longevity to do its job throughout the match. Offensive help to overwhelm steals could be very helpful. So something like a fire type or a fighting type that helps beat down opposing steel types could be very helpful. Alternatively, you could run the route where you run another Pokemon that kind of can overwhelm. So if you ran something that like uh, a similar style wall breaker that may also still get kind of frustrated by opposing steel types. The thing is that opposing steel types 
will eventually get worn down if they don't have recovery or if you're chipping them down hard enough to the point that Qian Pao can come in and clean later in the game. Now biggest threats are going to be bulky water and fairy types. We've seen those things, especially something like a Tapu Fini for example in the past, be something that Qian Pao really struggles with, oh, sorry, that Weavile really struggles with, and all those things still hold true for Qian Pao. You're going to need to be careful about these really bulky fairy and water types, especially because a lot of them have recovery. Kind of in the same vein, just strong physical walls in general will be a problem. Obviously Qian Pao has monstrous power and after an SD you could probably break through most of them, but you just need to be careful because it is so vulnerable on the defensive typing. Uh, one defensive wall clicking body press and you're like dead. So you need to be very careful about that. Like I said earlier, also choice scarpers and really any powerful priority move in general is going to be quite a large problem for Chen Pao. Um, choice scarpers will usually be able to still outspeed it. Uh, a lot of choice scarfers are usually 80, 90, 100 speed style mons, and those mons will outspeed Chen Pao and probably be able to heavily KO, heavily kill, sorry, heavily damage if not kill Chen Pao outright. Powerful priority moves like we talked about, things like Vacuum Wave, Mock Punch, Bullet Punch are all moves that Chen Pao is very susceptible to and can do with extremely heavy damage. But overall, don't let any of that dissuade you. I think Chen Pao is going to be an offensive menace. Like, but we've seen how successful Weavile is generation after generation, and Chen Pao just takes that off mold to another level it's going to be an absolute monstrosity in competitive play i think and you will be doing yourself a disservice if you either don't use it or prepare well for it guys let me know but what you think about chen pao down in the comment section below if you're excited to be using it let me know let me know what sets you guys are excited to try or if i got something that you really liked or want to change for example uh let me know what pokemon you guys want to see next i want to make you guys happy i want to talk about the pokemon that you guys want me to talk about so please let me know what you guys want to see also, there's a Discord link to our competitive Pokemon community down in the description box below. Go ahead and join that server where we have a lot of high-level competitive Pokemon conversations. We also have our Draft League, uh, Draft Classic 9 is coming up where you're going to be able to use these Generation 9 Pokemon in draft format, which is something that, if that's something you're interested in, definitely come check it out. It's a really awesome community. It's one of the, my favorite things to do. Um, and, we, and just in general, you can ask your questions. It's the best way to get in contact with me is in that Discord channel. You can talk to me directly there, and it's always a lot of fun. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe to make sure you don't miss this content, guys. It's always very appreciated whenever anybody wants to support the channel. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Kraken Nation, out.